What a treat to be in Karuna for my third visit in 12 months. And I'm thrilled to see the young people in the audience this morning to, to hear the inspirational talks. Uh, when I was listening to Michael a few minutes ago, I couldn't help remember when I was a student in the eighth grade in California. And somebody at that school had the idea to bring the seven original astronauts that he showed on a photograph. And they paraded them up in front of us. And somebody asked Michael, when did he get the bug? That was the day I got the bug. Because somebody, now my age now, had the idea to do something for you, the kids. You got the chance to see Michael today and uh, Ronaldo and others. Uh, those are fascinating moments, and they have great stories to tell. And what I didn't realize at that time, sitting in the chair where you are, even though I grew up in a place where jets flew over and I was a farmer, my family were farmers, I didn't see that as a pathway for me. I built every airplane a kid could build. I tested them in my living room, making them spin right and then left by adjusting the controls. It was an early test pilot that was inquisitive. But I never saw that as a pathway for me because that just wasn't available for a farmer. Anything is available to you if you have the passion in your heart. I'm going to take you on a little journey. We're going to show you a few charts about what my image was of my early life. And I'm going to talk about something that's dear to me, and that is the taking of risk and why taking risk is fundamental to being an explorer. There's a different thing happening in the world today. And I'll start to explain. If there's a picture that defines how my life has been over 59 years, I've been the child carrying the rifle next to my father. I've been the father with my sons carrying the rifle at my side. And now I find myself as the mentor and the elder of my family, my nephews, etc., And it goes on. And in each case, there's been a dog out front. And you laugh. My father taught me if you want to be a wise hunter, take the time, pick a good dog, and train it well. And you will become an accomplished hunter when you start taking lessons from your dog. The biggest thing I learned in that environment growing up was self-responsibility, accountability, and understanding the word awareness. What it actually meant to understand the environment you're operating in. And all the time building airplanes, my mother, my mother says I was a difficult child. She was right, because I was inquisitive, I was always exploring. It's just who I am. I found these animals to be absolutely magnificent. I love to hunt them. I get one a year. I don't look at this as something bad. I see that as a renewable source of protein managed properly. It's not our job to exterminate these animals, but that is a renewable source of protein. Each one of these things that was foundational to me became the most important element of being able to do this, which was my next career. That's quite a leap. There were a lot of little steps in between, like working and paying for flying lessons and working more to pay for more flying lessons, and then having people encourage me and write letters of recommendation. But I made that leap, and to find yourself one day in that picture and then you find every new airplane you want to fly, you want to get that picture flying straight up. I tried to get one of those in every one of the nearly 250 types of airplanes I've flown. And then one day along the way, some of your buddies takes a picture of you doing that. And in each case, many people said, that's risky business. I didn't see it that way. If you'd have asked me at the time, how much insurance do you have on your life? I probably would have said, do we have insurance? Think about where society is today. 
Then I made the leap into flight test and flight research. Next phase of my career, big shift from operational flying, flight test and flight research flying. Again, this was a step for me. I didn't have the proper education to be in this business, and people told me that. But I didn't let that stop me. I still wanted to be a research test pilot. And I found myself in a digital cockpit, the very first of the airplanes in the digital era, saturated by information. And the job was, how do you manage that? How do you make sense of it with one person in the airplane? Carry out your mission. Now airliners look just like that. But some of the early, the early days of military flying where you were saturated and bombarded by this barrage of information. And then you still had to fly the airplane. The amazing thing was, that's the ranch I grew up on. And I got to return to the ranch and fly over the ranch where I'd grown up as a kid, looking up at the airplanes from the test center flying over me, never dreaming that I had the pathway to that site. And then I had the picture upon return. Pushing boundaries. There was a time in my life when people thought airplanes would disintegrate going through the speed of sound. And over the skies of Mojave, Chuck Yeager, and you'll see a picture defied the conventional logic. Today, people think that humans will never break the speed of light. And I say, your generation must if we're going to continue to be explorers. We worked in small teams, had great outcomes. Small teams, great outcomes. But now about where society is today. In the same 30 years when I joined and started a career in flight test, I've been in this business 42 years, but in the last 30 years, Western society has taken on this notion that we must fasten our seatbelt or you get a ticket. You can't ride a bicycle without a helmet or the parent gets a ticket or can be tried for child endangerment. I kind of challenge that and I say, what happens with, what's wrong with going barefoot on a bicycle and get your feet caught in the spokes? That's how I learned not to do that. If I can't feel my head getting bumped on something, I'm not aware of what's around me. And if I don't scrape my knees, I haven't learned something that day. I question whether our insatiable appetite for total safety is serving the needs of the exploring human inside us. You can't go on vacation without getting travel insurance. You can't buy a house without insurance. You can't drive a car without insurance. You won't make an investment without assurance that you will receive the proper return. It's rampant in our Western society. And it's a fact of life. Remember the sign when I was younger, it said, just do it, get out there and just do it. I could make the case that in many segments of society now, that's changed. There are so many reasons not to do it. This morning you've heard reasons too. And the scale is tipped in my ideas in the wrong direction. It's tipped to bias safety and it should be tipped to explore. When I see this image, I think of get out there. That to me is one of the most powerful images of my senior year in high school, watching Apollo 11 go to the moon. And I, it's funny it hasn't come up yet today, but there's far more computing power in that iPhone than there was on that entire mission and likely on any of Michael's missions in the shuttle. And that product is directly a link of our ambitions to go to space and you carry it, everyone in the room carries one of these with them today. And that raised the quality of life on humanity for everybody. 70% of the world's population carries these. 50% of the world's population will have clean water to drink tonight. That's what technology has done for the quality of life on Earth. Chuck Yeager, early pioneer, broke the sound barrier. I bet he didn't have insurance, but he wouldn't have traded for being at that point, at that time, for anything. These pioneers in the X-Series airplanes, every one of them had mishaps. 
the first air-launched suborbital flight. Air-launched. Does that sound familiar to, to where we're going today? They had their problems, but did that stop them from trying? The beauty is they had the will to pick themselves up, get back in the air, and get back into flight. Orville and Wilbur, they probably had a bunch of bad days becoming the first to powered flight. One thing's missing in that image. Where are the children? If you ever find yourself in a position to create a first, make sure you invite the school kids from town. That's one of the things historians point out about that picture. There was no documentation of any children present that day. And then a year later, doing air shows, and the first paying passenger to die as a passenger of Wilbur Wright. Where were the attorneys? They saw a career path, and they created an industry to litigate. And one year after that, some pilot said, maybe we can put it on a ship. And 60 years later, that's me going off a ship. Those pioneers paved a way for every one of us, and they took enormous risks. How about your colleagues in the early days of exploration? I wonder what their insurance policies look like. Or Columbus. Columbus failed. He found America. He was told to find Asia. That was his map. That was the knowledge of the earth and the day. These were smart people. They were just as smart as us, but they didn't have the library of knowledge which you have available today. But they applied what they had and did extraordinary things through the will and courage of the crew. And Magellan, my favorite story. Europe was in decline in 1500s. The 700 years war had ended and the supply of pepper and spices had ended with the Moors. Ferdinand and Isabel, a state-sponsored exploration. The second trial run, remember Columbus failed. Go to Asia, find a sea route and bring back pepper. 293 sailors, five ships, two years later, one ship returned with 18 of the original crew. 93% perished, including Captain Magellan and it changed the world. It opened the seas to sea commerce and it raised the standard of living for the last 500 years for every one of us. Now I'm in a new industry. I've taken my experiences with child, operational flying, test flying and running businesses and now I have the gift of a lifetime. I run the Mojave Air and Spaceport. I'm the only one in this new commercial space industry making money. It's kind of an odd position to be in, and we're in the research business. But I've managed to form a framework where we collect the entrepreneurs who want to achieve and they have the will to achieve. Why is this important? A lot of people say they want to put tourists in space so they can go up there and look out the window and see. That's not why I do this. I want to put thousands of people into space, including me. That was why I got in this business. But the opportunities just weren't there, but for a very limited few. I want to put that frontal lobe of your brain into space and let you figure out what we do with it. That's what explorers do. They open the door and let the masses in. Do you think anybody knew what we were going to do with the internet? until it got into the hands of kids. Now look at the internet. But you have to open the door. I want to put thousands of people in space, not just so they can see the view, so they can use their brains. I've created a framework at Mojave that enables that. Who in their right mind would have dreamed of that project? That was a failed business that gave birth to four new companies. One of them resulted in Mike Melville winning the X Prize, the Ansari X Prize in 2004. A company of 34 people, the amount of people sitting right here created that. 
If imagine you took this group of people and said, in three years, we're going to put one of you in space. And they built their own airplanes, their own motors, and they changed thinking at Mojave. Jeff Grayson and x Corps, small team, came out of the rotary rocket, started a new company. In the last century, this little small company has tested more rocket motors than the rest of the world combined. Small teams, huge outcomes. And one of my favorites, Dave Mast. It's time to tip the scale. It's time to turn your telescope around and look for the long view of the future and keep in balance this insatiable appetite for absolute safety and allow yourself to unleash the inner core and be explorers. Be who we were meant to be. Use the brain, the part that separates us from the animals. We have a spot at the airport where we put this plaque given to us by Gary Hudson, who was one of the founders of the Roton Project. And it's worth it. Far better it is to dare mighty things, even though checkered by failure, than to rank with those timid spirits that neither enjoy or suffer much because they live in the gray twilight that knows not victory or defeat. Be part of the movement. Use your precious life well and make a difference. Give yourself permission and it starts absolutely with you. Thank you. <laughs>